Hi Cutters, this is Sean Guzzi from Clenergy. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, our structural engineering checklist. Uh, so what is that? It's a checklist that we send out if you if you approach uh, the Clenergy structural engineering team for the purposes of getting a certification for one of your commercial, usually a commercial project, then they're likely to send you this checklist that you can see here on the screen. And um, it's pretty important because the information that you enter into this checklist, uh, if it's not accurate, then the engineers will be uh, potentially running through and doing their engineering work uh, with inaccurate information. And then it may require a last minute change before the project is due to be installed. So it's pretty important that, uh, that the information that you enter in here is correct. And, and as such, I wanted to do a video today to, uh, to show you, just to take you through the, uh, the checklist. This is going to be uh, specific today for solar roof systems. And, um, and that way you can feel comfortable when you're filling in this form that, um, that you're putting in the correct information that, the, that our Clenergy stru structural engineering team requires. So if you like uh, Clenergy, if you like uh, commercial solar and, uh, and you're doing um, uh, commercial solar installations that require uh, site-specific engineering certifications, then I'd encourage you to hit the like and subscribe button and, uh, and uh, I'll continue to, to give you more content similar to this moving forward. So basically what we're looking at here, this is the list as you can see on the screen here. And generally uh, you'll receive this when you approach Clenergy um, to organize a preliminary evaluation uh, for the purposes of doing a structural engineering certification for your project. These certifications are usually required on commercial projects and, uh, and are becoming more and more um, uh, popular and, 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 and do, we're doing more and more of these every day because the, uh, the commercial solar space in Australia uh, gets larger and larger. And so you'll receive one of these in an email uh, from what, someone, one of our engineers, and, uh, and then you'll need to fill that in, usually in the body of the email, and send it back so that they can uh, perform their works. So let's just run through this today and see what sort of information they're asking for. Uh, so the first thing they're gonna wanna find out is who is your distributor or wholesaler that you deal with? And, um, and the reason that they want this is because uh, at the time that you go ahead with the, uh, with the certification, uh, or the time that you want to receive a quotation for the uh, for the works, uh, it'll need to be assigned to one of our uh, one of our many wholesalers or distributors. So you just put the name of, uh, of that into the uh, the box up the top here, and then we'll engage with uh, with your contact at that wholesaler or distributor. The next thing that they're going to ask for is project lead time. So the reason that this is important is that uh, well there's a number of reasons this is important the first reason is stock so if you come to us and you say i've got this project and it needs to be installed in uh, two two or three weeks time then we're going to be have to be working with products that are already here in the country uh, and so the general lead time on on products locally either through your wholesaler or if they don't have it in stock uh, through one of our warehouses in australia uh, would be generally immediate we carry a lot of stock and so uh, we have a warehouse in Melbourne and Perth at the moment. And so it really the lead time is just going to be, assuming the stock is available, the, the lead time for delivery from wherever the stock is located compared to where it needs to get to, which is the, uh, the project site or to your warehouse. Uh, for custom solutions, that takes a little bit longer. So it's something that we don't generally carry stock of. It's a, it's a customized type item. And these do come up from time to time on certain commercial projects as a requirement. Uh, and the lead time for those is generally around five to seven weeks. Uh, and that's really just the, the time it takes us to manufacture in, uh, in, if it's in China, for example, and then it's got to be loaded onto a ship and brought out to Australia. So usually five to seven weeks. Um, it can be a little bit longer depending on the time of year. The other lead times are for the uh, for the works themselves. So the first thing that uh, that that you'll generally do is once you've filled in the form and provided this back to the structural engineering team, they'll come back and they'll they'll spend a little bit of time and they'll do what they call a preliminary evaluation. 
And what that is, is they'll spend, you know, maybe an hour or, or, or more uh, just assessing, uh, uh, doing a basic assessment of the information you've provided. Uh, usually it takes around three business days for, for one of these to come back. And the reason why you want this is because uh, it, generally it doesn't cost you anything to, to do it. And it gives you the ability to have a, an idea about uh, what your maximum spacings are likely to be or whether the project is feasible or not so that you can quote the project. So you'll receive a preliminary evaluation from the structural engineering team and then you'll also at the same time receive a quotation through your wholesaler for the engineering works if the project comes off and uh, you need to go ahead. So if that does happen and you place an order on the uh, on the stock but also you place an order through your wholesaler on the actual structural engineering certificate after that point, assuming we have all the information uh, that we need, it usually takes around three to five business days for our structural engineering team to come back with those certificates. So that's why they ask for this information uh, for the, the project lead time on this document. The next one is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a name it, which will be used as a reference for the project and the location or the, the full address of the, of the project. Uh, next, they're gonna ask for terrain category. And you can see TC1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, and 4. There's, uh, there's a few different terrain categories. What is terrain category? So this little uh, um, diagram here from uh, a website called spanman.net, I really like this one. It gives you an idea about the different terrain categories. And so a terrain category with a value of 1, you can see here very open, exposed terrain, uh, flat, poorly grassed, really there's nothing around it to stop the wind from, uh, from hitting that building. The terrain category two, you can see it's a little bit more built up now. So you've got um, some you know, isolated trees, uncut grass. Um, you might be on the edge of a lake, for example, or near an airfield, pretty fairly open terrain still. Terrain category 2.5, it's uh, once again, probably more like agricultural. So there's a few houses around, um, some trees around, longer grass, those sort of things. Terrain category three, which is probably the most uh, common terrain category that you'd see in commercial projects would be, you know, closely spaced houses, trees, warehouses, um, and, and a lot of the, the buildings around you would have a similar height as each other, which act as a wind block. And terrain category four, is like city buildings, basically. Uh, so that's terrain category. Next up is wind region. And in Australia, we've got wind regions A, B, C, or D. And so I've got a, uh, I believe I've got a map here. Yeah. So if you want to find the map um, and you go into the, you can go into the Clenergy website and you go into products, uh, mounting systems, solar roof, for example. If you open it up here and you scroll down and uh, click on the download section, that gives you a list of all the downloads here and you can download the installation guide, which, uh, which I've got here. And in the installation guide, this is on page three of just of our solar roof installation guide, it gives you a wind map. And so you can see here, um, the internal region or the, or the white region is uh, wind region A. And then as you come up the coast a little bit here, uh, you've, it's starting from, I guess, uh, uh, there's Burke there. So kind of in line with Burke there, it, it hits wind region B. And then once you get to around Bundaberg, it's uh, wind region C, which you can see here. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit here. You can see that it changes there. So this bit's C, these bits here with the lines would be B. And that follows all the way around the coast, pretty much until you get to uh, like Port Hedland here. And, and this is like the windiest region in Australia. And that, that would be wind region D. So next up is mounting interface type flush or tilt so really they want to know what is the uh, is it a flush install or a tilt install so what does that mean a flush install for example would be where the panels like you can see in this image here are basically installed flush to the roof so um, flat to the roof if you will a tilt install is just where the, t the panels would be on tilt so on one of our different tilt systems this one's uh, for example our adjustable tilt system and it's tilted up off the uh, off the roof itself. So it's pretty easy, that one. Next, they're going to want to know which way are the rails running? Are they running parallel or perpendicular to the purlins or the ribs? Um, and so uh, there's an image here that, uh, that kind of helps to explain this. Where you can see these little screws. Uh, this These are the screws that hold the roof sheeting, in this case, into the 
uh, into the purlin. So the purlins are running in this direction underneath the panels. And you can see it's another uh, screw line here and here. And so what they're asking is in this case, uh, it's a penetrative uh, roof. So they're going to screw through the roof uh, sheeting to hold the rails on. These little things you can see at the, the little black rails, you can see hanging out the bottom of the rail, uh, the panels here, uh, the rails, and these are running in this direction underneath the panels. You can see the clamps here, if I really zoom in, uh, they're clamping the panels. So, so in this case, the purlins are running in this direction, the rails are running in this direction. And so the rails would be considered running perpendicular to the purlins. If the rails were running the same direction as the purlins, then parallel, the rails are running parallel to the purlins. So that is that one. Next up, they're gonna to wanna to know what's the type of roof sheet. Now, generally it says here tin tile or concrete. Uh, look, in most cases, uh, it's gonna be a tin type roof. Uh, you don't do a lot of structural engineering certifications on tile roofs simply for the fact that you don't get a lot of tile roofs uh, in, in commercial. Um, it does happen from time to time, but I think I've seen it once or twice in all my time there. And, um, and a third option, which I won't go into today because it is really uh, in depth, uh, I'll probably get one of our structural engineers, uh, Andres, to run you through that. He's, uh, he's our resident expert on concrete roofs. But in this case, most times you're going to be looking at tin roofs. And you've got tin roofs, uh, which can be penetrated or non-penetrative um, roofs. And so, you know, the, the most common types of tin roofs you're going to see are your straight corrugated tin uh, or a trim deck type roof in this, in this case. And then for non-penetrative roofs, uh, you've got, there's a number of different non-penetrative roofs that we have done testing on with our products. So in this case, and I'm just reading from, this is another one of the installation guides that you can find on our, our website, it's the Solar Roof Clip Lock Interface Installation Guide. And on that guide, uh, on page uh, three, I think it was of this guide, if you scroll down, you can see that we've listed out all the different uh, non-penetrative roofs that, we, <clears throat> that we've done testing on. So we've got the Lysite Clip Lock 700 Classic, uh, high strength, Cliplock 406, and there's a number of others in here too. And so when you're uh, trying to figure out what's the, what's the different roof type, you can use this as a guide. Alternatively, the best way to, to figure it out is to get some as-built drawings from the site, which should specify the roof type that was used. Or alternatively, sometimes you can, uh, if, if there's a label still on the roof shedding, you can get access to, to underneath to see what those are. You'll be able to recognize that. Um, from the, the label on the roof sheet. Uh, failing that, if you can't find out what the roof sheet type is, then uh, and you want to go down this path, then we can assist to organise some on-site roof testing where um, they'll, uh, someone will go to site and we'll do some non-destructive testing on the roof to basically f determine uh, what what the loads, what sort of loads capacity that roof and that roof sheeting can can withstand. And so you enter that information into here. Um, so that's everything for really the project details. Next, you've got building information. And so the first question is, what's the use of the building? Is it a residential building? Generally not for commercial. Is it a hospital? Is it, is it for education? The reason that they want to know this is so that they can determine what we call uh, an importance level on, the, on that building itself. And so uh, there's a really handy website here, which I found called shedsandhomes.com.au, and they've got a, they put together a bit of a description. So importance level or IL is a crucial aspect of your building design and will determine the approach of engineering used in your building. The importance level of your building indicates a level of consequence and hazard to life should the building fail or in, in another example, should a solar panel um, end up you know, coming off that roof or, or the, uh, the roof sheeting coming off the roof itself during a high wind. You don't need to uh, give us the building importance level, just a description about the type of building, but this is what the, the structural engineers are going to be looking for. So they're going to say, what's the level, the importance level um, of the building? So level one would be buildings with a low degree of hazard to life and other property in the case of failure. It might be a shed out in the middle of a, you know, a farm somewhere where if a panel comes off the roof, it's the likelihood of it um, injuring or um, putting anyone's life at risk is really low. Importance level two is really the default level. And it's the description really here is just uh, anything that's not level one, three or four. So if we skip to level three, that's buildings designed to contain a large number of people. So that might be schools. Um, it might be large commercial properties. 
uh, those sort of things. Level four is uh, buildings essential to post-disaster recovery or hazardous material facilities. So, you know, an example of this might be a hospital, uh, for example. So that's, uh, that's the reason that they ask for, for that uh, building use information on there. And so, um, you know, you just enter that information in and if they have any follow-up questions, they'll come back and, and speak to you about that over the phone. Uh, next up is your building dimensions. So we want the length and the width and the height, really. And so to determine your length and width, um, one way I like to do this is uh, you can actually use Google Maps for this. So you put in your your, your address, in this case, you put in the Clenergy uh, office here, and you, go to, you can go to your satellite view if it's a little bit easier to see. And uh, if this will work, yeah, here we go. So if we zoom in here, and we just uh, right click on the page and say measure distance, then you can measure the distance of the building like that. So in this case, it's given you total distance of 52 meters. So that's the length, that's a little bit off, but, uh, and then you can click here and you can get your width, um, which uh, you can work out, but look, it's, it's, it's combine the two, but um, you can actually do a, Apologies, let me turn off my phone alarm here. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can. So you can use the, uh, you can clear the measurement, and you can you can run it again to to determine your width there as well. So that's that's a really handy tool that you can use in order to uh, to determine the length and the width, and the height of the building. Really, we just want to know what's the height from the ground level up to the uh, to the roof of the building. So commercial buildings usually it's around uh, ten meters or or somewhere between five to ten meters in most cases. Next up is roof pitch, uh, which is pretty self-explanatory, but roof pitch is, uh, as you can see here, it's the angle of the roof um, or the pitch of the roof, I'll call it. Then they're going to want to know the purl and spacing. So for purl and spacing, uh, really it's pretty simple. You know, here you can see that uh, this is the roof without the roof sheeting on top. And these are your purlins. These are the, uh, the um, I guess, the, the things that they screw the roof sheet into. And they want to know what's the distance between these parallels. Uh, you know, it might be usually somewhere between one to two meters. And so that's all the building information that they're going to ask for there. Next up, they're going to want to know what's the PV module or the solar panel uh, information. So they're going to want to know the panel dimensions. So in this case, length, width, and thickness of the panel. Uh, and so, what, you know, the, the best way to find that is if you um, Google the panel and you can usually find the data sheet. Uh, so in this case, it's uh, Canadian Solar. It's off the Canadian Solar website. And if you scroll down on those data sheets, you can see there is a diagram here. But usually, there'll be a mechanical data section. You'll get dimensions. So you'll get it. Uh, in this case, it's 2078 by 992 by 35 mil. So you would just enter that information in. And what else do they want? Panel weight. So that's there as well. So here you can see 23.4 kilograms. That's an easy one. Panel power, so that's just the wattage of the panel. I guess in this case, we're looking at a roughly a 400, 400 watt panel. Panel clamp type, so standard or universal. This is referring to the types of clamps, the Clenergy clamps that uh, that you'll be installing with. So there's a couple of, there's a few different types of clamps. Uh, the main two types, obviously standard and universal. So a standard clamp would be a clamp that was designed specifically, uh, generally for the thickness of the panel itself. Uh, so this is an end clamp you can see here. We've also got uh, a dual end clamps. So this one here, you can see is if you change the location of the bolt and the nut, there's another hole here, which you can um, undo that and put it into. That'll give you a diff uh, either a 35 or a 40 mil panel. These have been out for a while now. You can get these from the wholesalers. Uh, there's a 40 or a 46 mil end clamp as well. And then you've got your standard uh, interclamp or mid clamp, um, which would be specific to the thickness of the panel also. And then you've got a universal clamp. So there's a couple of options here. Um, so you've got your uh, universal clamp for, and these are both for uh, frame heights between 30 to 46 mil. So it's adjustable and it can be used as an end clamp or a mid clamp. And then there you've got universal clamp with uh, just with a grounding clip, which comes with a, a grounding clip pre-attached to that, which saves a bit of time on installation. So that's what they're asking there in that question. Um, panel plan top, yeah, total panel count. So that's just the total number of panels on the roof. So there's a, there's an example here of a uh, a panel layout basically. So that would be the total number of panels uh, on that on that roof. 
Next, they're going to want to know the panel layout. So once again, this is an example of a, of a panel layout and you've got, so we can just zoom in here a little bit. The way that we, uh, that we write this out is, so for example, um, it's a number of uh, rows per array, number of panels per row, and number of arrays in total. So in this case, uh, you've got uh, a one panel array. Um, so it would be uh, yeah, basically one, um, so number of rows per array times number of panels per row. Uh, so if, uh, if, we, if, if we've got these four one panel arrays, um, you've got four times one uh, times one, basically, in that instance. Other, otherwise, you, you've got three panel arrays, so, you know, we, uh, and there's four of them, so it'll be one times three times four, uh, for example. And so uh, if you can provide us with that information, that's really handy. It also it helps to clarify the, um, you know, which, which, which areas, because uh, sometimes you have different roof heights, which would um, give you a different outcome for the engineering or the spacing requirements. And, um, and also something to... Uh, consider when you're designing your arrays also is thermal expansion. So thermal expansion is where the aluminium itself will expand and contract under heat or uh, so higher heats or lower heats will expand and contract. And, um, and it, can, it can warp the, the metal if you have runs that are all connected together and running for too long. So generally we say for eco rails, which are the rails that you would use on most of the solar roof installs, you want to try and max your your arrays out at twenty meters before you separate the um, uh, before you separate that uh, array into a separate another one. So if you're originally intending to have you know forty panels running along on the roof in one go, you'd separate that into two times twenty panels. So that's all that is there. Uh, other than that, the last thing you really want to put in there is uh, just your preference around the accessories that you might want to include. You don't need to add this in, but if you want to, uh, it can help a little bit. So you can add in cable clips, uh, cable clips, which can also be found on the accessories section of the, uh, of the web page there. There's a few different cable clips. The main ones probably are the, the, um, the two and the four cable clips. And these, these clip into the, uh, the, the panel frame itself, and then the cables clip into those clips. Uh, it helps with cable management. You've also got, um, it'll also ask you if you want caps. So you've got caps for, um, uh, for ST rail, for eco rail. Uh, these, these are just plastic caps that sit on the end of the rails themselves. And also, it'll ask about isolator brackets or isolator shades, uh, shrouds, sorry. Uh, so if you want those, you just need to specify how many of those you want. And then it, they'll just ask for general comments. So hopefully that helps to, um, uh, that's, that's been helpful to explain some of the questions that, uh, that are going to be raised or, or brought to you when you engage Clenergy for our structural engineering services. Uh, if you liked this and found it um, helpful, please like and subscribe, and um, and there'll be and I'll continue to release these videos. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, we can make one or two a week moving forward. Uh, if you've got any suggestions around what you'd like to see next or any questions on this one, please leave them in the comments below.